Okay, so geometric series just means we are adding the terms of a geometric sequence. Okay, what you'll find here is that terms add up really quickly. You get really big numbers or super small numbers if, if the R value is less than one. Um, and so you get kind of extreme values when you add them up. So there's a geometric sequence, 2, 8, 32, 128, etc. The series, you're adding them together. Okay, so we're going to look at coming up with the formula. Okay, so uh, just a sec here. One second. Page. Okay, so determine the sum of these six terms. We can do the following. So kind of like we did for the arithmetic series. Arithmetic, we switched them around, and then we found that the columns added up to 101. When, in this series, um, you'll notice that if you multiply by the common ratio, then you get some terms that are exactly the same. Right, so um, if we start with S6 and we multiply it by 4, well, 2 times 4 is 8. That's now our first term. And then we go through for those six terms, okay? If we then subtract, that's something that's not, we're not going to add because that doesn't give us any numbers that have any meaning. But if we subtract these, then we get a whole bunch of zeros, right? This goes to zero, this, 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 this. So we get, um, so notice how really we did this second line, subtract the first line. So 4s minus 1s is 3s. And then this, this side here, all we have left is 8,192. Okay, and then we're subtracting 2. So you can show it the other way around, but what you end up getting is um, 8,190. So that's the value of 3 times s. So then to get s, you divide by 3. Okay, so we want to count, that's how you can do it. You don't want to have to do that all the time. So you want to think about um, what this means in terms of a general case. Okay, so we subtracted 4 times S6. So let's say we're, we're Sn. Okay, well, actually I think we have it on the next page here. So let's look here. Yeah, so here, now if we start with Sn here and we put the common ratio times Sn above, that's a better order. We should have done that. Oh, I guess you guys did do that in your notes. This smart board file is, is older. Anyway, so it's easier for you to understand on yours. Uh, here with the R value, so there is your R times SN on the top, and then we're going to subtract SN. So R minus 1 is R minus 1, right? Makes sense. And then all of these go to 0, and so we're left with negative 1T1, plus T1 Rn, or this first, okay? So basically, I would go straight from there to there. there. Then factor out a T1. So you're left with Rn, R to the N, minus 1. And then solve for Sn. So that is your formula, okay? Now there's two versions of the sum formula. So you'll see... We gotta update this notebook file here. I don't know if I have it on the next one. Okay, so here, sorry. Uh, the other version is when we have, uh, so we take a look here, so this one, I'm just gonna copy it out. This is what you have on your notes. Okay, and notice how now um, it's the next line is RTN minus T1. Well, what happened there? So remember that TN for a geometric is the common, um, is the first term times the 
times the common ratio to the n minus 1. Okay, well, if that is this, if we multiply that by r, r times r to the n minus 1 is just r to the n. Okay, and then we have the t1. So these are equivalent, and so this can be shown... Okay, so two sum formulas, just like with um, arithmetic series, we had two sum formulas, depending on what you know. So this one's good. This one you end up using more often. You need to know the R value, your N value. Okay, so R, R there, N, and T1. Here, um, you don't actually have to know the n value. You have to know the value of the nth term, but not n. Okay, so don't need to know n here. Okay. So if you know the last term in your series and the first term in the common ratio, you can figure out the sum. Okay, so they're summarized at the bottom there. So you can see the first one says use if you know the number of terms and the first term and the common ratio. The second version, use if you know the first term, the last term, and the common ratio. So let's do it. So determine the sum of the first 12 terms of that geometric series. So you don't even have to figure out if it's geometric or not. Um, so... so um, we want to find S12, okay? Well, T1 is 5, and your common ratio, take negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, okay? And obviously, N is 12 if we know that we want to find S12, okay? We don't know what the 12th term is. Okay, so I'm not going to use the second version. I'm going to use the first one. So Sn equals T1 R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. Biggest thing people, students do is they get confused a little bit there with uh, T1 R to the N minus 1. They know that for the, the term value, it's R raised to the exponent N minus 1. And then, so here, with this minus 1, they sometimes put it with the n up top. It's not. That's r to the n, and then you subtract 1 from it. Okay, so just be, notice the difference. This is in the exponent, and this is not. Okay, so uh, we're finding S12. First term is 5. Common ratio is negative 2. Please make sure... You put uh, any negatives in brackets, okay? And then um, minus 1, so that's sort of a big bracket there, over r minus 1. Um, now, you can do this all in your calculator. I actually don't have my calculator out yet today, so just give me a sec. Okay. Oh, I better do it here because it doesn't like it on the small part. Okay, so um, if you have the ability to do fractions, this would be a question that I might do just so that you get the brackets in the right place. So I'd go 5, open bracket, uh, another open bracket, negative 2, close that bracket to the exponent 12. Because that's going to end up being a positive. Minus 1. Oops, see? Got to be careful in your calculator. So delete, delete. So out of the exponent, minus 1. Close that bracket. Then cursor down. Hopefully you can do that in your head. That would be negative 3. Enter on that. Okay. 
If you don't have the ability to do a fraction, go 5, open bracket, another open bracket, negative 2, close that bracket to the exponent 12, out of, and then subtract 1, close that bracket, and then divide by uh, negative 3, or open bracket, negative 2 minus 1, and close that bracket. Okay, so negative 6,825, uh, just give me one sec. We are negative 6,825. Okay. Okay, next question. Um, so we just copied out the formulas again uh, for the next question. Uh, on my sheet, you won't have that because you can flip over. Uh, determine the sum of the geometric series. So notice here how the values are getting smaller. So that uh, tells you that your common ratio is less than 1. So start thinking about that. Um, because if you're multiplying by something that's bigger than 1, the term values are going to get bigger. But if you multiply something uh, by a number less than 1, it's going to get smaller. And that's going to lead into our lesson tomorrow as well. So um, method 1 would be one of the equations, and method 2 would be the other one. Okay. Basically, we can use either here because we do know our last term. We don't know how many terms there are, though. So in method two, from formula two, this would be Sn. We don't know how many terms, but um, let's find the property. So T1 is 1,458. T2, uh, we don't need T2, sorry, uh, R is 486 divided by 1,458. And that is going to be um, one third, I think. So just check out there. Uh, 486 divided by 1,458. Yep, so that would be one third. Okay. And our nth term is two ninths. So, uh, common ratio, one third. Nth term is two ninths minus the first term all over r, which is one third, minus one. Okay. So, uh, 2 over 27 minus 1,458 over negative 2 thirds. And then if you, you, if you um, use your calculator to figure it out, challenge yourself on this one. How about we don't use a calculator? Get ready for calculus next year. So, multiply through by the lowest common denominator. It's going to be 2 minus, oh, but then I probably would use a calculator, right? So, so you don't have to. I was thinking, but I'm not going to make you multiply four digits by two digits. So, um, if you're using a calculator, so we go, again, you could use a fraction within that, or just 2 divided by 27. Okay, minus 1,458 over, and then we go negative 2 divide 3. Now, haha, -ha, so this one, it doesn't convert it for you. So um, you can do it in parts. Um, so you could go, okay, I'm going to copy out, if you have the ability to copy out. Okay. 
No, it doesn't even do that. Okay, you got to do it the old-fashioned way. Your newer calculators might do it. I don't know. It's trying to save you some time, but so that's going to be um, two minus. 39,366 over 27, and then multiply by negative 3 over 2. So you know 3 goes into this 9. It's going to be negative 39,364 um, over... That's negative, and that's negative there, so it's going to be positive over 18. And then 2 goes into that, so that's going to be 1, 9, 6, 8, 2 over 9. And then you can, oops, then you can check. You can always check on your calculator, right? So 1,000, oh, sorry, 19,682 divided by 9 and that's what we found up there okay so you know you've done it correctly so that's method 2 we didn't need to I still don't know how many terms that is okay so for method 2 you don't have to know how I'm how many terms you just have to know what the last term so this is a finite sequence and we're finding uh, the sum of all of those term, uh, terms in that sequence so it's it's actually a series because we're adding and we're, so we're finding the sum of all of those terms method one um, we do need to figure out what n is so which term this is so this will require using Our general term formula, we know that the last term is 2 ninths. Our first term is 1,458. And our common ratio is 1 third. Okay, so then we're going to divide both sides. By the coefficient. And 2 will actually go into this, 729. So this is going to be 1 over whatever 9 times 729 is. Oops. So 6,561. Okay, so we want to figure out 3 to the what gives us that denominator. Okay, so let's go 3 to, let's try, say, the 7th. Nope, so if I multiply that by 3, I do get it. So it's going to be 3 to the 8th, so that'll be 1 third. So this is 1 third to the 8th equals 1 third to the n minus 1. So that means n is... is 9. Okay. All right, so we're still not done. Now we have to find the sum. So now what we're finding is S9. Okay, and then that the first version of the formula is T1 and brackets. So it has brackets, remember. So T1 uh, was 1,458, bracket, r value to the n, which is 9, minus 1 over r minus 1. Okay. And again, probably use my calculator on this. So 
So um, you can do it all at once if you have that fraction capability. So 1,458, open bracket. Then I'm going to open bracket again. I'm not going to use fractions in here because I can just do one third. Close the bracket on that. Raise to the exponent fifth, uh, ninth. Okay, cursor out of the exponent, minus one. Then close the bracket. Then go to the denominator. I know that one third minus one is negative two thirds, so I'm just going to enter it right there. Okay, and we know we get the same thing. Okay, now, saying that, this is not going to um, give you the fraction form. We already tried that before, right? So um, let's just try it on again here. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so uh, what you then can do is uh, do the fraction form. So 1 over 3 to the ninth, what's that? Minus 1. Um, because you will need to sometimes convert it, make sure it's in, in fraction form. So it will be based on the, the question that we say. If you can round, if we say round to the nearest hundredth, then obviously it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, if you enter in way more eights, someone's put that in there, uh, then it'll probably, so if you re-enter this, so 2, 1, 8, 6, point eight 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 so more eights okay and then oh shoot what did I just mean do that and then math frac nope mine didn't I don't know maybe you have to do a whole bunch more in any case uh, you can figure that out. So it's our final answer is the same as the last one, 19,682 over 9. All right. Okay. And then next one here. Determine the value of the first term if you know the common ratio and the sum. Uh, so remember, that's not the term. So be careful on this. Some of you might think, oh, well, I'm just going to keep dividing this by 5. This is the sum value, not the term value. Okay, so we have S7. We have um, N is 7. We have R is 5. We want to find T1. So no matter which um, formula we use, we can find T1. Um, probably this one, if you think about it, we're looking for T1. We have R in all of these. We have N in here. And we have the last term, okay, the seventh term, right? So, um, I'd probably find use this just because then it doesn't have a brackets and exponents, but you can use either one. So S7, oh, actually we know what S7 is. So negative 58,593 is equal to the R value. Oh, no, sorry, what am I saying? We don't know this seventh term. We need to find it. Um, yeah, so, oh, I'm combobulated today. Too many people asking me questions about other things today. Okay, so let's go back. I think the first method is going to be easier because we don't have the seventh term. If we had the seventh term, then we could probably be better to use the second method, but we don't. So, we're going to use the first method. So, uh, negative... 58,593 equals T1, which is what we're trying to find out, times our R value of 5, exponent is 7, minus 1, over R 
minus 1. Okay? And then you can do 5 to the 7th. Seventy-eight thousand one hundred twenty-four. Seventy-eight thousand one hundred twenty-four over four. So you can divide that by four. Okay, and then. And then basically divide by that 19,500, uh, 19,531. Okay. Oops. So negative 58,593 divided by that answer is negative 3. You're really not going to get anything too weird for a term value. Not a crazy uh, decimal or really big fraction with lots of big numbers. Not usually anyway. So this makes sense. It's a pretty nice number. It's a nice integer. Okay, so that was the biggest thing there. That was S7, not the seventh term. All right, and then a nice answer here. So, question, just a sec. Okay, so then, last one. So you want to think about this one and, and probably draw a little diagram to help you. So a super ball drawn, dropped from a height of 10 meters bounces to 70% of its previous height every time it bounces. So determine the total distance the ball traveled when it hits the floor for the fourth time. So personally, I'd like to draw a little diagram, okay? And so um, here, the super ball is dropped from a height. So it's dropped from up here. This is 10 meters. And so think about it. It's going to go down and then drop back up. Okay, it's obviously not necessarily traveling. Sometimes super balls, if you, if you intend for them to do, they will keep traveling away. So, um, but it's going to go back up to 70% of the previous height. Okay, well, what is 70% of 10? That's um, 7, right? So this would be here. This would be a height of 7. And then it would go up 70% of that height. These would actually be parabolas, because that's how balls go up and down the air. I'm kind of making them more pointed, but they're really parabolas. Okay, so then that would be 7 times 70%, which would be 4.9. So you could keep doing this, right, and do it by hand, right, because I've already done, this is one bounce, this is two bounces, this is three bounces, and then we have four. Right, so you could do it by hand, but we want to try to practice our using our formulas. Um, so we want to find uh, the total distance the ball traveled when it hits the floor for the fourth time. So this would be to the total distance. This would be as a height. Okay, we're assuming that it's. I've drawn this horizontally, but it's really. Um, dropping it and bouncing back up, uh, you're not moving at all. Think about a super ball when you're, especially when you were younger, you probably threw them around, bounced them, all that kind of stuff. So um, the total vertical height. So basically we have to go, we have a 10 meters, and then we have to go up the 7, down the 7, up the 4.9, down the 4.9, up whatever 70% of 4.9 is, down that amount as well, okay? 
think about these values, if we're talking about um, this being term 1, because it's the first bounce, like it depends on which term you call the first term, 10 or, or 7, right? So if we call this... Um, see here uh, the best way so really we have 10 plus two sevens plus two four point nines plus two of the next part right um, so you might want to consider your uh, sum of a this would be 10 plus uh, 10 times 0 0.7 plus 10 times 0 0.7 squared okay uh, plus, what's the last one? So 10, 2, 3, 4. So that would be, the last one would be 10 times 0 0.7 cubed. And then your, so this is uh, basically going downwards and then uh, upwards. is just uh, 7 plus, zero, plus 7 times 0 0.7. Okay. And then you can add them all up. But we want to do um, want to do it in a more uh, a faster way so that if I said after the 20th bounce, you're not doing it um, the whole, you know, every term. So I, uh, what the way I think about it is I think about these values here. So um, I'm going to have the sum of the first term is 7. Common ratio is 0 0.7. How many terms? Three terms minus 1 over 0 0.7 minus 1, okay? Then I'm going to have two of those because that's going to be going up and then, so the, those goes up, then I need the going down, so I need two of those. And then I want to add in the 10. So total distance. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so let's check it out on calculator. So fraction uh, seven bracket zero point seven to the exponent three minus 1, close that bracket, and that's just going to be negative 0 0.3, then times 2 plus 10, okay, 40.66. Okay, if you think about it, the long way. What was 4.9 times 0 0.7? 3.43. So we would have two of those plus 2 times 4.9 plus 2 times 7 plus 10. Okay, and then you get the same thing. So we're going to likely give you something that we would want you to do, uh, show the work for using the formulas. Um, so more than just four terms, but you can always check it. Okay. And that's it. That is it. So, um,